Skyward Warrior here. Unlike my other videos, which are usually presented as sped up builds of my 3D characters with captions, this video is actually going to be a special one. This is part one of a tutorial series that I'm making based off of my most recent uh, character build. I'm going to be creating DJ Music Man from Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Uh, I had put up a poll on my community tab asking some of my viewers or anyone passing by if they would like to see a video from me that was a tutorial on how to make 3D characters, especially characters that would be ready to be animated. And the reception was pretty good, so that is what I'm going to be making. Unfortunately, dubbing this video was kind of a logistics nightmare because I was trying to watch back my footage in After Effects and record my voice, but I realized that After Effects could only render a preview for so many seconds and I would have to keep going back in and just trying to figure out what I wanted to say with the loose script I wrote down was not good enough, so for the rest of this video I will be using a text-to-speech. Okay, I will take it from here. Please take this map. I mean, welcome to the tutorial. Skyward Warrior CG divided the tutorial into some simple steps. Step 1 Find your references. References are almost always 100% necessary to understanding a character, prop, or environment, even if it's an original concept, since they can be used as guides. Credit to Fox Bear Films for the top reference used here, as well as GG Games for the other unlit references. Links will be in the description. Not getting references is like if you refused my maps and tried navigating the pizza plex blind. Short answer, don't do it. Side note, do not get discouraged if you end up needing a million references, and do not get discouraged if the 3D process takes a while. The daycare attendant took 12 hours, and Spamton took 10. Step 2 Understand the character, this step ties into the first one. Using your reference images, try to doodle the character you wish to create. Through this process, you will understand what you can from the ref's basic shapes, like DJ Music Man's soft cubic head and bicycle helmet shaped abdomen, natural posture, proportions, and other specific details, like how joints work or look, the feel of certain parts, etc. Step 3 First Perspective Drawing You will need at least two different perspective drawings to use as your finished references when modeling the character. I recommend starting with the front reference it is easier to make since it's symmetrical and facial features help with proportions. Skyward started with the side drawing, but then switched over to the front drawing.
Step 4 Second Perspective Drawing Now Skyward switched back over to the side drawing. It is recommended to use the other drawing at a lower opacity to make sure all traits on the drawings are at the right height, proportions, and everything is consistent. She did not include the limbs on this one because they would obstruct her view of his body shape. After this drawing, Skyward found it helpful to collect base colors from the references to use for texture bases later on, as well as placeholder textures when modeling to check the model's accuracy. She also went on to do a third partial drawing from overhead, to help with DJ Music Man's abdomen details like the speakers and overall shape. Step 5, optional, third perspective drawing. This is the final perspective drawing Skyward needed to make sure she had all of DJ's details sketched out. By the way, feel free to deviate from the references to customize your concept to fit your style or whatever else you want to do with it. Have fun. Once done sketching these, the model sheet is complete and ready to be used in the 3D workspace. troubles away hey hey we're turning up the music we're having a ball this band keeps rocking forever and ever and into the jalopy gonna go for a ride to the pizza shop with a friend we're jumping in a rock until the sun goes down and the moon is shining forever and ever forever We're rocking and rolling, our friends are all here. Got our ice cream sundaes and go ho ho. We're diving into pizzas and burgers with cheese. Keep the French fries coming forever and ever. We're bringing all our buddies, it's time for a jam. Gonna play till our worries are gone. Picking up the music and rocking along. Just keep playing forever and ever, forever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever and ever, forever and ever and ever and ever, 
6 Prepare the 3D workspace. One of the first things you'll need to do when you open the 3D workspace is to learn how to navigate it. There are a few keys that are used in pretty much all 3D programs for this and other main functions, the mouse wheel, control, or I guess command for Mac users, alt and shift. For 3D Studio Max, rolling the mouse wheel zooms, dragging with it pans your view, and dragging with alt, rotates the view. This is in the basic perspective. There is also an orthographic view, which flattens the view on an axis and is helpful for modeling at some angles or to a certain accuracy, which can be toggled with keys like 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7 for Blender, and T for top or L for left ortho view in Max. It is helpful to get used to toggling the view types and exploring the viewport. Import your model sheet into the material editor as textures on plane objects. Drag in planes from the basic shapes creation options, then open your texture slash material explorer, create or select a basic material, then import the model sheet as the base color. O turn on backface cull in the planes object properties this is helpful for viewing so references are invisible from behind and don't get in the way O try to align your starting point for me, it's usually the head, to the workspace origin at 0 0, then the references to each other, copy the model sheet so you have one at each angle for each perspective drawing you included on the sheet, and try to line them up. Step 7 Start Central and Basic, start your character with either the main body or head. Begin with built-in shapes to box model, or a plane. Skyward prefers boxes, and be sure to pick shapes that resemble the character's shapes. To be able to edit the base shapes mesh on the polygon, edge, and vertex basis in 3ds Max, you must add a modifier to it that changes it into what is called an editable poly, or editable mesh. This is one of many modifiers that can be added over top of a base model. Modifiers act like unique effects layers, and can be reordered, altered, and turned on or off like layers in 2D art programs, like Photoshop for instance. Two other essential modifiers Skyward works with when modeling are Symmetry and Turbo Smooth. Symmetry is especially crucial for modeling characters and make your job easier by letting you model only one half of the object, while it mirrors your work on whatever axis you choose. You can even move the pivot of the mirror to change where the symmetry affects the model, or at different angles. Skyward uses symmetry throughout modeling DJ Music Man, especially on his head base and abdomen. TurboSmooth is just a modifier you can apply that analyzes the mesh of your model and adds extra polygons to smooth it out. This helps to give models a certain polish that is hard to create otherwise. In order to control how it smooths the model, you can add tight edge loops near corners or edges of the model to sharpen it up. The more you already have on the mesh of the model, the more control you have over how it looks when it's been smoothed over. Here are some other things to keep in mind when modeling, before starting to model, turning on angle snap toggles is helpful, especially when needing to rotate objects exactly or when modeling hard surfaces. Center, align the pivot points of your objects. 
The pivot is where you move, scale and rotate the object or model, and misaligned pivots can mess with how your object rotates, scales, and aligns to other objects. Pick base placeholder colors that make seeing your models mesh easier. Later, these can help distinguish different parts of your character, or even be makeshift textures until the unwrapping and official texturing phase to see how character, model looks, save your file in lots of iterations. This helps if you want to experiment a lot with the objects, and makes sure your very big projects don't get lost if you accidentally delete one and these get very big, use X-ray mode skyward as certain all programs have it to activate it in 3ds max, select whatever you want to turn translucent, and hit alt plus X, this lets you see your model and the reference behind it simultaneously so you can shape the mesh to the reference much easier. Get in the habit of rotating around the work a lot, and zooming out, this helps you check to make sure whatever part you're editing isn't messed up on another axis. Step 8, Precise, Detailed Modeling Techniques. When modeling, there are usually just a few different tools Skyward uses other than the selection tools like loop, or ring for grabbing edges of the mesh for manipulation. A couple of these are extrude and inset. Extrude lets you pull out new polygons in a column from one you've selected. Inset lets you create new, smaller polygons within existing ones. Extruding is helpful for adding features to your mesh, like fingers on a hand as one example. Inset is helpful for creating concentric rings, holes, or divots. Another one is chamfer. Chamfer lets you take a single vertex or edge and split it into a cluster of edges or vertices. This is helpful for preparing eye sockets, mouths, noses, and other features. Using chamfer also prevents you from creating too many full edge loops around the whole model for singular details. Too many edges or polygons can make a model cumbersome to work with and mess with your smoothing or symmetry. Some of the other tools are Target Weld and Cut. Cut is a tool that lets you draw new edges across your mesh, and it could snap to vertices or edges. Skyward thinks Blender has a tool like this called Knife. and target weld lets you select and merge vertices to other vertices. This is helpful if you accidentally created extra verts you no longer need, or if you find a hole in the model that needs to be fused shut.
This is the end of part 1 of the tutorial. Skyward hopes that those who requested the tutorial are learning something, and enjoying so far. This was her first major tutorial, so she would appreciate feedback. Also, feel free to leave any lingering questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the second part of this 3D character for animation tutorial. Mapbot out.